and we are going live. We are live. So we are live and meeting is now live stream. Yes, we did it. Right? We've just done it and we are live. Okay. And my audience is guys going to... Okay, now we are finally live. I'm sending the message again. Can you hear me? Uh, your, your, your mic is muted. I can hear you very well. All right, it's okay. So I think we are just 19 minutes late. That's all right, because that's what the, the uh, that's where we needed to be. There's some more people who needed to wake up, some more people who needed to, uh, you know, watch me live. They, the minute they will be up in their countries, they'll get a thing, Shikha is live. And I'm hoping most of them are going to just pop in here to comment and celebrate you. Anyway. So I always, I always, I always, I always, uh, you know, say this, that people who live their stories, tell their stories the best. I do not read any bio data. I don't believe that bio data do any justice to the lives that these incredible people live. They always show up uh, with this few lines and that's not who they are. There's so much more. And when they tell their story, the feelings, the emotion, the connection is so much more. Here we have Rashmi Mishra. Uh, who's joining us tomorrow for this beautiful event in Wiki. I'm going there from, to Bangalore and Anjana is joining us as well tomorrow. So you will meet her Anjana there. She's one of the moms in the book. She's in the comments and um, she is our guest of honor. And we just had one hour to present 100 mom stories to Bangalore, uh, which we could have not done. And um, each story takes, I think, days to tell. Um, so we decided that we will bring her on a day before so that we announce it tomorrow that whatever you want to know about her, we've already covered in my interview and it will be available live on my profile all the time for people to watch. Welcome, Rashmi. It is a, it is a delight. I, I, I'm holding on to it. I love conversations, especially the inspiring ones. And that's why before this, I was just saying, hold on, hold on. I want to know everything while we are live so that I know it for the first time and you tell us for the first time. Yeah. Let's start the journey. Where did Rashmi's journey start it? What is she and where she reached? And then we'll take the conversation ahead, including the people in the comments. And if I'm looking at the comments, I'm listening, but I'm just looking at the comments and trying to answer. So please go ahead. So wonderful. It's, thank you so much, Shikha. It's so wonderful what you do because women and mothers are the most precious, uh, I think the most most wonderful people of this world because in our, in our philosophy, in our Hindu philosophy, the mother is really like God. And uh, truly, uh, from Rudyard Cup tripling to Gandhi, they've always said that closest uh, on earth to God is a mother. Right. And uh, to my story is I'm a mother, a grandmother as well. And for me, uh, when my children were growing up, I gave them whatever I could, my all. But for me, uh, you know, one of my greatest passions is to educate India. And I started many, many years ago, uh, 1985. That is 36 years ago, when I lived on a, on a campus of the IIT Delhi, where my husband was a professor. It's a beautiful campus which segregates real life with the world. And as you know, India is a land of contrast. So on one side, we were so fortunate that we got an education. We got everything as, as and I was, luckily that I had a family that encouraged everything that I wanted to do. But look at the other side of India, where girls are not even allowed to go to school. And that's what exactly what hit me. Because in this beautiful campus, there was a dirty uh, sewage water where the kids from the slum used to come to play. They couldn't build a wall over that. And that's what changed my life. It's five girls who changed my life. And um, I was a teacher, a dancer, and uh, you know, a mother, and a very busy with, you know, in India, you, you as a mother, you take on 1,000 challenges. <laughs> So I walked up to these five little girls in this dirty pool of water. I said, why aren't you in school? They said, where are you coming from? Don't you know girls don't go to school? You don't have, so I said, I said, but do you want to study? He said, of course you want to study, but nobody will teach us because we are girls. So I'll teach you. And literally I brought them home and I started with those five little girls, very smart little girls. And I realized that all it takes is an opportunity. And everything with education is magic. It changes everything and everybody. Okay. I started with those five girls. Today we've educated 500,000 girls, boys, but mostly girls, 60% girls. 
and we work with children, youth, and women with a mission, educate, empower, and transform. Yes. And it's incredible what this journey has done because this journey has, uh, we, I, we managed to touch thousands of lives, actually millions of lives. And what we found is that bringing them in the opportunity and giving them the, the, the respect, the love, affection, and, the, and teaching them a cross bar, not just education, but an education where they can be empowered to be the givers of tomorrow, women especially. And I started with children, but very soon realized that mothers are the key. Because if you don't educate the mother, she will never send her daughter to school. And for me, that was the, the closing point. And I took the mother and I gave her a chance to, to learn a skill. And today you will not believe, I have so many stories to tell you. But oh. one I like to share. Can I share right now? <laughs> Before you go, Mawansa is here, and that statement is life changing. Instead of being stressed as a mother, think of yourself as a goddess or a life giver. Yeah. And uh, why I'm saying Mawansa is working very closely in Zimbabwe um, as well. And we have some mums who are just uh, so grateful. So, absolutely, the story that we're all about stories, stories is what inspires. So, please go ahead and tell the story. <laughs> So very soon when we started educating mothers, we realized the most important thing for them is to be bread earners because they're the ones who take care of the household, the children. And often in a poor family, what happens, the husband gets into drinking and spends all his money. They will not share it with the wife. So the woman is left alone and no matter what way she manages by working or whatever, not eating even sometimes three days, she'll feed her children. She'll look after the best she can. So what we realized is that we started self-help groups. So we trained women, illiterate women, to make a business plan and start a program. So in slums of Delhi, uh, we set up little women's centers. This girl called Neelam came. Neelam was, came into, walked into our center and says, can I die? Would you accept me? Can I die here? So I said, Neelam, you know, we looked after her for three days. We fed her, we looked after her, we gave her the affection. All the women rallied around her without knowing her. She's a complete stranger. But it didn't matter because they understood that there is a, there is a problem and she needed our help. So we, after three days, we asked, you know, what are you good at? She says, you know, I'm very good. I'm from Bihar and I do Madhubani, which is a form of art from Bihar, a very beautiful art, which, uh, you know, she had learned. So she showed us. Today, that same Neelam, has employed 700 women. She runs a self-help group. And she says, you know, I'm not interested in making money because I've changed, you changed my life. I want to do, do the same thing to many other women. Meanwhile, her children were out of school. Today, her children go to university. Her mother-in-law used to beat her every day, is now respects her fully, lives with her. The husband who was always drunk and beating her actually passed away. So this is a story of one Vidya woman. And like that, we have thousands of examples of women who it's just changed because opportunity and love and affection. Yeah, yeah and we have Jamile joining us. And Jamile, if you are still listening and watching, um, she's another mother, what a story of her journey. And Jamile can so relate to what you're saying. Uh, she's come up uh, a long way and her story still uh, brings tears uh, uh, to my listening. But when I look at her, coming out with so much passion, you know, helping so many mothers and she goes right there on the screen. We will be happy to meet her someday. We'll have her in India someday. I mean, Jamile, I absolutely, uh, I think you can relate to it. Mawansa is saying, Neelam, uh, uh, we send you love from America. Um, you know, three, like 300,000 people, uh, 36 years of your life dedicated to just embracing them, to loving them. Um, and, uh, you know, and this is this is the mother pulse I've been talking about that we not necessarily only need to extend it to our own children. Once the mother pulse is supported, is alive, is uh, thriving, it supports many, many things around, all around it. And um, having said that, uh, your journey now, where is it reached with Vidya? And uh, what are you doing now? And how are you moving forward? And then yeah. we'll move forward to some of your mother journey as well. What's your mother journey been? Sure. How your mother was and sure. how your children are. Wonderful. So Vidya, for us in Vidya uh, uh, concept, we are now gone digital. So even digitally, we've taught women how to manage digitally. 
So we started something called digital sati. That means digital friend in in sati means a friend, right? Girlfriend or friend. So many women in our country, as you know, have not had an opportunity to go to school or to study or to especially be part or even understanding what digital is. So what we did was we trained our uh, fifth, sixth and standard girls who are studying with us, um, who have the opportunity you know, to go to school. And we work out of many uh, public schools, government schools, 52 government schools. We have 206 projects across Pan India. And many of them are focused basically on girls. So what we did was we trained our girls how to work on simple apps on the phone. And they went and taught women in the communities, poorest communities, that everybody can afford a 2000 rupee phone. It has apps on it. So we taught them to jump them the generation and they actually learned to uh, be safe with the help of a phone. They could even uh, you know, complain about lack of water, lack of facility with the phone. So they became what is called a digital sati and we give them a certificate that now you are, you are capable of managing your life with a phone. And actually they learned straight on a phone how to communicate in English. <laughs> it's amazing. But, you know, so uh, we, offered, we also offer our women and uh, those who come to our centers uh, 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 NIT certification. And I remember when we had given, we've given thousands of these certificates across the country. So we play, train our women directly on a computer. And they're so smart, they learn. So I remember once the chief guest came and says, asked this woman, he says, you think you know more than your husband? Oh, says, he knows nothing, but I know way more, but I don't tell him, but otherwise there'll be a war at home. Because right. they're coming from homes where their husbands are uh, for, you know, workers. They're like uh, sea workers, you know, electricians, carpenters. But these women have learned English, computers, and life skills. That's the three things that we teach. Every woman who walks into Vidya, and we have some thousands of them across right now. And we teach them a trade, driving, beauty, uh, sewing, embroidery, all certified. So with beauty, and just to share with you, uh, we have certifications by Shanaz Hussain. And wow. they, came, they came as as maids, they were working as maids for 3,000 rupees or 4,000 washing dishes. When they learned at Vidya within six months, they were earning 60,000. And so, Everything changed at home because a woman, once you educate her, when you empower her like that, her husband respects her, the mother-in-law respects her, the kids listen to her, everything works. She's a contributing wow. citizen to India. So wow. this is this is what we are on right now. And across every Vidya, which is we have women's centers, we also work, go to slum communities and work with even those mothers who don't have an opportunity to even come to us. So we go to them. We right. call it Vidya Shakti. So it's a movement. It's a movement of social change. And uh, as I said, educate, empower, and transform is our mission. Right. And we have very welcomed anyone who wants to volunteer, join us, mentor women like this, girls from the community. By the way, the girls in our, in our schools and programs are doing 100 times better than the boys. <laughs> so one of the girls who was not permitted to go to school, she says, no, you know, he says, you know, I've changed my grandmother. My grandmother, who said no girl to school, she's now every girl to school. Wow. And the kids have done the, they've done the role modeling. We didn't have to say anything. All we had to do was educate the girls. Yes. And everything was else followed. They taught their mothers. They took over, uh, took over responsibility. They stopped their fathers from drinking. Yeah. I have 14 year olds who stopped their father from drinking because we taught them in Vidya that how you can solve that, those kind of challenges. And education solves every problem. So that is what Vidya is doing, and we love you to visit Vidya wherever. Oh, I will, I will, I will. I and it is here. It is, uh, you are in Bangalore. You have to uh, uh, really go and see this in person because she is a very yeah. passionate herself. And uh, you know, Jyoti Bai Phule uh, was another mom. You know, in Pune, I'm in Pune, and when I listen to her story as well. Um, and there's an international audience here, and her story was also of education. You know, bringing education. And, uh, you know, uh, when she, she used to carry a sari with her. Yeah. And I must tell this story that this woman so many years back used to carry a sari because when she was bringing education, people used to throw mud at her on the streets and she had to go back and then change the sari and start the education for girls and women started to do education, you know. Um, and 
yeah so i think i got stuck so i i it was you were reminding me of her and um, and you know we marched and what i love about you and i am meeting you for the first time as well we just had a brief introduction in the morning and you are a guest of honor because i've been hearing about it it will be honor to have you in the future with mom uh, nationally internationally with us and what i love about you is that the way you show up with your full stride with your full smile with your full you know uh, all the life that's thriving through you i can so very well see that how much life you get from this it's just not something that's wearing you down it's not something that's putting you that oh i have to do it it's some da- march you know we need to go ahead and show the world because that energy just takes us down right i always say the mum that we've created is no there are no slogans there are no feminism there's no standing up for anybody's right Absolutely. all we are doing is intention in a message and a story and that will multiply to tell the stories and change people and it is already changing many many lives and many connections are being formed and through you when i see you when i see you you know right now and i will see you tomorrow in person and my in person hug is going to be there for all the work that you're doing um it's very inspiring so how do you keep yourself motivated to look so positive or just happens that it just absorbs in that way because dealing with everyday pain with 300k plus or 500k plus and like using 5 lakhs or 500k whichever audience is listening to this there is a lot of pain that you absorb and then there is a sense of attachment and detachment game you always have to play so that you can don't suffer with them and multiply the suffering and you can support them in a way that they move forward how do you do that what is it that's there um that you do that you know the humanness of women is a strength of women that they are very understanding of life much more than and they're not selfish that is that is the whole quality of a woman and that you know when you see a girl or a woman rise up with her you know every every one of them has challenges whether it's at home or it's with the husband or it's with the mother in law or it's with their children or it's just for their permission when i see the courage that they bring in for example when i started working with women it was a youth slum uh, close to the uh, where i started started my school first school and they had one faucet of water one hand pump for 600 people and i said how do you do it she says once a week we get a bucket of water i said how do you manage the rest of the days with a smile these women used to share water that today i'll give you my bucket or i get next week and you can give me your bucket next week it's incredible things that you cannot imagine forget management forget uh, education it's common sense that rules a woman and that common sense is her strength and her belief in the positive attitude of solving problems that i have never i have learned so much from the common woman she gets up at 4 or 30 in the morning she has no money she cooks with whatever she has she gets beaten every day by the husband and she's still smiling so that teaches you that you know the courage a woman has and if you give her that empowerment and that love yeah. and that confidence that says she can stand on her own two feet she's capable of earning she's a different woman she, so i'll just give you another very short story <laughs> Because, oh, yeah, you know, literally, so we all yeah, so, so there's this young girl called Shikha. Yeah, she's also Shikha. <laughs> well, uh, and she was, uh, uh, you know, had a very poor, from a very poor home. And she came to us and uh, we gave her a loan to start a phone. There was no phone, no public phone where they, where they lived in this very poor community. One small hut with one door and one window. That's it, four children. And a husband who was a white washer. we gave her a loan she put a landline phone on her window and and this is a true story and in those days there was no mobile phones i'm talking about the 90s you know no mobile phone in india not even a phone she charges she charged some few rupees for each call and she returned us the money we told the deal was that you get you'll get a loan but when you get the loan 3000 rupees is to start with and then give another three when she she returned the loan within 3 months she says i've made this money so we gave her double loan This time the husband came to fight with me. He says, "I am going to throw her and the phone out." I said, "But why?" He was jealous because she was doing well. He says, "Because men come and touch her hand, and I don't like it." So I said, "The next loan you will get, not her." <laughs> He she came for the training, and we gave him a bigger loan. They actually 
together set up a cyber cafe. She used to wear a burqa. She's a Muslim girl. Her burqa went from here to here. <laughs> Instead of fully, she, she exposed herself. Her kids got into Vidya schools. They were not going to school before. And with the husband's loan, everything changed. Now they run, they run a cyber cafe, my dear, in the same slum, both of them together, because they're doing extremely well. So they progressed. Right. And all it took was empowering one woman. The whole family changed. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I'm for it. And I, I'm, I'm, and I am for all the stories to come out because um, stories stay back. Stories inspire us. Stories yeah. is something that we verbally send it to our children and inspire them. Yeah. Uh, right. You know, and um, uh, an empowered mom empowers her partner. <laughs> so that's what Jamila yeah. is saying. And Mawansa is there as well. And uh, Anjana is there. And Anjana will meet you tomorrow, she says. Um, okay. Iti is there, Iti will come in and I am sure more people are going to join this conversation but more than that it's an honor to know that uh, what an impact, what an impact and did you ever think that you would have this kind of a number to show 36 years down the lane, this is the number you will have to show when you started with the first five girls and all it needed was a heart uh, and just a little space and the trust that nothing will go wrong. And you know, there's so many stories that come up when you bring in these people, yeah. this will happen, that will happen. Why are you bringing them in? You know, disease will come. Uh, these kind of stuff stops the people from fear of bringing them in. And uh, you know, they will steal stuff. So much judgment that they go through and it yeah. stops so many people. And right. they live with these judgments and they never get an opportunity to rise. And here you are, 36 years of your life devoted to it and then showing up like a star with a beautiful bindi, <laughs> with a big smile and uh, all great things to tell us. Um, uh, if you, you have to give a message to somebody who's fearful, who's fearful of starting the mission, who's fearful you know, of starting any kind of initiative for helping because of the fear and the talk that goes into their head or the world says, what will you say that? What will you tell them? What I say is that, you know, God made you into a woman who has the strength inside her. You don't need anything else. You have to believe in yourself, number one. Number two, take the courage because you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for other women. You, you have to be a role model in whatever way that you can and be unafraid. You have other women who always support you and that's always going to be there. I've helped so many women stop from suicide just with this message. There were three of our people I knew really well, not really from the underprivileged, even the privileged who had right. this negativity and said, I, and I used to sit with them, I said, listen, you all have a quality and you are lucky that you can manage so many things. You all have, you know, God has given, made you a woman who can manage many things. You can, you know, think of all the qualities you have that you can, if you can produce children and bring them up in a good way, you have to set an example. And right. no matter what your situation is, you, if you put your mind and your focus and you say that I am going to do it, there's nothing to stopping a woman, I tell you that. I've seen that know. again and again. And as I said, I've learned from them. So whenever I have a personal problem, I think of my women who, who have taught me that what is courage. Stand up and, and always stand up for the right. But the right is always wins. Have the truth, the honesty, and the courage to say that is very, very important. And to also, so what we did is we always teach our women how to manage their day. It's very important. Look after the people you look after. Look after your husband, look after your mother-in-law, look after your children. Take your responsibility, but look after yourself. You are very important for yourself. If you are not happy, the world, the family won't be happy. So you are the, you are the nucleus of the family. Yeah. If you go wrong, everything goes wrong. So oh, yes. connect. Your, you are the magic that holds a family together. You are the, actually the, the glue of every family. A woman is the glue. And if she can create an atmosphere of loving and giving, it will come back to her in, 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 in oodles of amount. If you can respect even your mother-in-law, no matter how tough she is, love conquers all. Oh, yes, it does. It does. Okay. And love conquers you as well, right? Yeah. If, if you are all about love and you can conquer your own thought, I yeah. don't think anybody can actually not get affected and get better to you. Sure. And, um, you know, these women here in the comments are so amazing. Mawansa has taken a beautiful journey all her life. Jamile is very, very inspiring. Anjana yeah. is 
uh, taken all the way from Kashmir. Uh, she's uh, made the transition from being a Kashmiri Pandit and now she's a parenting coach. And all these women that I've brought, these are all mums in the book. I'm so proud of standing right next to them in their stories because we need to join hands. And this movement is joining such beautiful hands. We have um, another uh, mother who is supporting 900 girls in Africa and supporting the schools with those 900 girls in Africa. And, um, and many such stories and many such stories and stories of empowerment that are there. And it's an honor to bring you in this circle. I don't know where we'll head because if you would have just come three, five months back, you would be in the book that we printed for sure. Oh, wow. Now, um, yeah, maybe no. with mom. I'll, I'll, I, yeah, I'll be happy to help or, or work with anybody who needs any any help. We now, have a wonderful she, curriculum. She wants yeah, to wonderful. partner with you. She is in the US and she, maybe all these people start reaching out to you. So be ready with all the reaching out uh, yeah. uh, and as well. But yeah. you're truly, truly an inspiring person and um, and it's just not words. I I'm a photographer. I'm a I visually I've been photographing and taking portraits of people. I see when I see the joy when I see. In, I'm not even met you in person, and I'm sure your your energy is very infectious when you're around. And uh, showing up in your full stride and in all the stuff that can only generate positivity itself is a very big thing a person can do to herself and you're just showing that i will see you tomorrow thank uh, you so much Shika. where can they find with their and if they want to talk to you and if women from different parts of the world or if mom wants to come join hands because we are an empowerment foundation and we need to start um you know reaching out to moms and help them yeah these hundred moms whatever connection they can give to the moms that uh, we can help Please let us know where we can find you and so let it's very simple. We have a website, a Vidya website. It's www. Vidya. Yeah, I'm just putting uh, it. www. Yeah, www Vidya dash India dot org. Okay, India. Dash India dot org. And in that you get all the update about Vidya. Yeah. And uh, uh, that is the best place for you to go. And you can all our numbers are there, all our emails are there. So connect. I'm Rashmi Misra, and uh, I'm the founder, uh, founder president at present. But we have a fantastic group, mostly women, or 99.7 are women who run Vidya with the same passion, with the same energy, and with the same commitment and a mission to educate, apply, and transform. And please visit us. We are in Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, Pune, Goa, and Gurgaon. So we have everywhere. We have women, children, and youth, mostly women. Lovely. And they're amazing because each one comes with a fantastic story. And lovely, lovely. Yeah. So this yeah. year, mum is going uh, with mental health is what my focus was to bring in the mental health of a mother. Doesn't matter privileged, underprivileged, because if a privileged mother can be mentally strong, she will help the underprivileged. So we yeah. need all strata's of life, mothers to be mentally strong, and we are standing up for that. And I will reach out to any help and guidance that I need in that direction. And we are also supporting, uh, you know, inclusion program. We have Mrs. Masrut, who's, and you will meet her tomorrow. She's coming all the way from Pune, another really amazing lady who's done so much work with inclusion um, and uh, standing tall, you know, for the last 30 years uh, and working with inclusion program. And those kids are becoming part of our lives uh, with mom everywhere. And um, I will see you tomorrow. And Thank we will put all the glimpse of all the hugs onto the Waves Facebook for people to enjoy. I will see you when I take a flight and reach to Bangalore. Waiting Lovely. to meet you. Thank Please you so back. much. For, thank yeah. you so much for giving me this opportunity, and thank you so much. I'd love to be a part of Mom. Oh, <laughs> Mom. I, 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 you already are. You just, came, you just <laughs> and came. I'd love to see whatever contribution I can do. Uh, and you know that Vidya is open uh, to accept moms, and you know, connecting together and huddling together, I think, is the biggest joy we can. I, I, I can already pinpoint some moms who are all around me whose children are not studying and I can send them to the Pune branch and I'm already it's already working in my mind how to do that. I'll meet you tomorrow and have a detailed yeah. discussion. Yeah. And okay. meanwhile, everybody in the comments, thank you so much. And uh, in fact, these women will reach out to you. You yourself will take another level of inspiration from these women as well. That how did I'm you sure. do this? Uh, how did you guys come where you have reached? So thank you to everyone for being part of mom and we are just slowly, slowly, slowly only joining hands.
with no mission, but only intention and a message and a story to tell the world so that people can get inspired. Thank you so much. I'm going to go off live and um, I will just say bye to you once I'm off bye. live. Uh, yeah.